Please join me in welcoming the class of 2023 as we introduce this year's commencement processional, led by the chair of the University of New England Faculty Assembly, Marilyn Gallucci.
please welcome the faculty of the University of New England. the President of the University of New England and the Platform Party.
Good morning. As, thank you. As the mace bearer of the University of New England, I declare that we begin the 2023 commencement. Please listen as Megan E. Smith, Bachelor of Arts degree in psych psychology, sings America the Beautiful. skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain America America God shed his grace on whose stern impassioned stress a thoroughfare of freedom beat across the wilderness America America God mend thine every Thank you, Megan. I am now pleased to introduce Mr. Dan McCormick, Chair of the University of New England Board of Trustees. Please be seated. It's always nice to start with something everyone's looking forward to, the please be seated. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the University of New England's Board of Trustees, I would like to welcome you to our 2023 commencement ceremony. I'm joined on the platform today by my fellow trustees. Thank you for your service to UNE. Fellow Nor'easters, I feel privileged to join you today to celebrate the University of New England's class of 2023. Over the past several years, it has been my pleasure to play a role in UNE's evolution and to spread the word of its many successes. But the highlight of each academic year is your commencement ceremony, which brings us together to honor our amazing graduating students. It's a day of well-deserved pride for our undergraduate and graduate degree recipients for their families, their friends, and the members of our faculty and professional staff who have guided them in their studies. Graduates, I'm so proud of you. Over the course of your studies, you have personified UNE's mission of supporting the health of the world's people, communities, and natural environment. While gaining mastery of your chosen disciplines, you have put your growing expertise to work improving the lives of people in our local area, our region, our nation, and around the world. And it is that selflessness in the spirit of UNE students, that imperative to make the world a better place that I would like to highlight in my remarks today. You see, when people learn of my affiliation with UNE, 
and they ask me what distinguishes our students from those at other colleges, the answer is always close at hand. I tell them that the people who gravitate to our university and enroll in our programs are uniquely motivated to do their part in a society that they recognize as needing our help. Locally and globally, we face big challenges. And UNE students don't wait for graduation to begin addressing them. They jump right into the fray. UNE students take a hard look at their chosen fields of study and at the world, and they resolve to use their budding expertise to make things better. Sitting among us today are graduates who have chosen, who have shown their concern for our older citizens organizing wellness fairs, and working to make the city of Portland more age-friendly. Other graduates have chosen to give their time and talents to the youth population, volunteering at pediatric health clinics, designing adaptive occupational therapy projects for youngsters, providing no-cost dental care, and speaking to middle schoolers about brain safety. We have students who've worked to understand the challenges facing our oceans, in the organisms within them, learning to combat the effects of coastal erosion and ocean warming, to farm seaweed and fish, and to support ecosystems crucial to our planet's health. Many others graduating today have used their growing expertise in their disciplines to introduce adaptive sports to those with physical disabilities, to organize suicide prevention awareness campaigns, and to advocate for women's rights. And still others have helped celebrate our minority communities by hosting events commemorating Black History Month and by drawing attention to racial inequities in medical treatments and outcomes. We have other graduating students, actually a great many in fact, that have participated in campus discussions and classroom debates centered around some of the most contentious issues of our time. They have immersed themselves in the marketplace of ideas in doing so, they have resolved to do their part to mitigate the polarization that has come to grip our society in recent years. Students, I could go on and on detailing the ways that you, from each and every one of our degree programs, have engaged in studies and practical experiences to serve the greater good. But my point is this. The diploma you receive today is a wonderful accomplishment. It's really quite remarkable. It represents the hard work you've put into your studies and the knowledge you have gained. But it represents so much more than that. It also represents the compassion animating your work. You leave UNE with knowledge, skills, and most critically, the motivation to make our world a better place. And I have every confidence you will succeed. You will do your part and you will inspire others along the way. Thank you. Thank you for caring so much about others and about our world. And thank you for dedicating yourselves to making a brighter future for us all. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce someone who shares my pride in your accomplishments and my op optimism for the world you will soon come to lead. Please join me in welcoming the president of the University of New England, Dr. James Herbert. Thank you so much for those warm remarks, Dan. And thank you so much for your leadership of our Board of Trustees and your many years of service to UNE and your guidance and mentorship and friendship. I really appreciate it. And good morning, Nor'easters. Good morning. It is so nice to see you all, to see all the families and loved ones here with us today. It's wonderful. So thank you to everyone, the students, the loved ones, the professional staff and faculty, special guests, I welcome you all to the University of New England's 2023 commencement ceremony. This week, each of our five colleges has recognized its graduating students in its own way, but today, this morning, we gather together as a university, all together, to honor all of our graduates and to celebrate their many accomplishments. As has become increasingly the case in recent years, today's festivities have an international flair. Many of our students, especially from our College of Professional Studies in particular, have traveled great distances to be here, 
and others who cannot attend in person are watching this ceremony online from various points around the world. Students, whether you're here today in person or whether you're watching from distant parts of the U.S. or from your homeland, this ceremony marks the culmination of your hard work. It offers occasion for you to reflect on how far you've come, to celebrate your remarkable accomplishments, and to look ahead to the amazing things that you will do. This is also a very special day for your loved ones who've supported you in your pursuit of higher education and for the professors and members of our professional staff who've guided you in your learning at UNE. We are all so proud of you. On a personal level, I've gotten to know many of you firsthand during your time with us, and I will miss you. Um, thank you for bringing your intelligence, your curiosity, your creativity, and your compassion to our community. Each of you has made your own special mark on our campuses and our programs, and they won't be quite the same without you. But we know you're ready to forge ahead in the larger world and apply your knowledge and skills to important pursuits. Indeed, today marks the next stage of the beginning of the rest of your life. It's a time of celebration. It's a time when everyone seems to have plenty of advice for you. I know because I remember sitting in that chair right where you're sitting as a graduating student. In a few minutes, I'll introduce our honorary recipient, degree recipients today, and our commencement speaker, Dr. Ron A. Kretschner, who is a national leader in higher education as well as a distinguished classical musician. He has much wisdom to share with us, and his personal and professional priorities align closely with those of UNE. During his tenures as president of Wheaton College and subsequently as president of the University of Richmond, Dr. Crutcher championed the value of diversity and inclusion on campus, as well as the value of open and free expression. Like me, Dr. Crutcher understands that these two imperatives, which are sometimes thought to be at odds with one another, are in fact inextricably linked, and that that connection is what I would like to reflect on as I take a few minutes to speak with you this morning. My fundamental message to you is this. Seek out and engage in experiences with a wide range of people. Though it may be easier to associate with those who think like you, who vote like you, who share the same cultural background as you. If you step outside your comfort zone, you will be rewarded by a life that is endlessly more complex and enriching than it would be otherwise. Your time at UNE has prepared you for that kind of life. Together, we've all worked hard to foster a community that values diversity and inclusivity, while at the same time, values open, robust, civil discourse across differences. It is my hope that you will carry the appreciation for both of these UNE priorities into your professional and your personal lives. Let me speak first about the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI, as it is commonly known. Then I will talk more about how we must not shy away from, but we must, in fact, embrace conversation across differences. And finally, I will tie these two ideas together. Students, throughout your time at UNE, you've worked with our faculty, professional staff, and administration to intentionally create a diverse, just, and inclusive community. This commitment is reflected in our curriculum, in our student recruitment efforts, student retention practices, recruitment and training of faculty and professional staff, and in many other aspects of our operations. And most importantly, it is reflected in students' daily interactions with one another and with our faculty and professional staff on our campuses. At UNE, we have been on the front lines of the fight for racial justice since our earliest days. Back in 1964, before we even became known as UNE, our precursor institution, St. Francis College, welcomed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to our Biddeford campus for an event that drew guests from across New England. In the 59 years since that historic visit, Dr. King's only one to Maine, we've hosted an annual community-wide celebration each January to commemorate his life and to shine a light on the work that still needs to be done 
to create the type of society he envisioned, one in which a person's skin color is irrelevant to their legal or political status and their social or economic opportunities. Building on this history, shortly after my arrival at UNE, we codified this commitment in our strategic plan, which makes ensuring a welcoming, inclusive, and vibrant community one of UNE's key strategic priorities. Students, the America in which you have grown up is more diverse than at any previous time in our history, and our campuses should reflect the full richness of that diversity. As such, our admissions team works tirelessly to, to enroll the broadest possible, possible demographic of prospective Nor'easters. You, this year's graduating class, are more diverse along many dimensions than those classes that came before you. And last fall's incoming undergraduate class was the most diverse, ethnically, racially, and geographically, in UNE's history. We work no less hard to ensure our campuses are welcoming and supportive of all students once they join us. Toward that end, we recently created a new position, the Assistant Provost for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and welcomed Shannon Zlatkowski to that role. Students, with our support, you've launched new campus affinity groups and clubs to foster a sense of belonging for all students, including those from diverse ethnic, racial, gender, and disability backgrounds. At UNE, we intentionally cast a wider net than many universities do when it comes to DEI, including groups like first-generation students, rural students, within our de definition of diversity. We've also brought to campus high-profile speakers like the iconic civil rights activist Angela Davis and prominent politicians like Stacey Abrams, Bill Clinton, and Jeb Bush to share their wisdom with us. And last spring, we hosted the Reverend Lennox Yearwood for a lecture on how racial justice and climate justice inter intersect. We make these investments because we believe we all benefit when the magic of higher education is extended to those for whom it has been traditionally out of reach. We know, too, that we all benefit from studying, working, and living in a diverse community. We have so much to learn from others whose experiences, backgrounds, and perspectives differ from our own. And that brings me to that related priority that's near and dear to our institutional heart, the one concerning the importance of viewpoint diversity on campus. As you know all too well, we live in an era when not everyone is comfortable sharing what they think. When issues concerning politics or a host of social issues arise, many of us bite our tongues for fear of saying the wrong things. We bottle up our thoughts and opinions to the point that we don't speak, or when we do, we do so more out of anger or frustration than of genuine interest in expressing our views and understanding those of others. It hasn't always been this way. People with opposing views used to do a much better job of actually talking with one another about contentious topics. In fact, this country was built by people with opposing views who hashed out their differences, sometimes in private, sometimes in public. They disagreed with one another, but they weren't always disagreeable. And while they didn't always engage each other's mind, change each other's minds, they often found enough common ground to work together. And at the end of the day, they respected and often even liked each other despite their differences. In today's highly polarized times, that type of respectful idea sharing happens far too infrequently among members of our political class. And the talking heads on cable TV and the provocateurs on social media are only too eager to extend that venom into our daily lives, dividing us into warring ideological camps in an endless culture war that drives ratings, page views, and retweets. At UNE, we work hard to counter these forces. We provide students with the foundational knowledge and tools to resist the pressures, tempting them to oversimplify how they view the world and their fellow citizens. And we immerse our students in an environment that welcomes a wide range of views, whether expressed during campus events or by peers and professors both within and outside the classroom. We strive to foster a marketplace of ideas in which students can sort through various perspectives on a given issue and separate the good ones from the bad. But these efforts amount to nothing if you, the students, don't embrace them. 
and how you have embraced them. I couldn't be prouder of how you have embodied these values during your time on campus. Consider, for example, our President's Forum, a moderated discussion series launched shortly after I arrived at UNE, which models for our community how people with widely divergent views on the most contentious issues can sit down together and discuss their positions. This spring, we hosted an event on the complex issues around transgender women participating in competitive women's sports. Previously, we've host hosted discussions on policing in America, guns in America, the ethics of profiting from climate change, and other similarly divisive issues. Such events could not happen at many other campuses, but you have embraced them, showing up in large numbers, listening intently to the conversation, and asking hard questions in a constructive, civil way. Indeed, you have modeled to the world how to engage thoughtfully with difficult ideas. Your participation has likewise been remarkable at other events on campus. For the past 14 years, our Center for Global Humanities lecture series has been bringing speakers from across the ideological spectrum to campus. These speakers have often commented to me afterwards that they were so impressed by your thoughtfulness and level of engagement on their topics. Our final lecture this spring was by Suffolk University historian Robert Allison, who offered a critical appraisal of the New York Times 1619 Project, which argues that the arrival of the first enslaved peoples in North America constitutes the true founding of our nation. And this came just a few weeks after a different camp campus lecture entitled American Slavery Did Not End in 1865 by historian, genealogist, and civil rights activist Antoinette Harrell. These events are just a few examples of how we welcome a wide range of views on controversial issues at UNE. I could go on and on listing others, but I think you get the point. We believe in cultivating robust discourse on important topics and doing so from a perspective of intellectual humility, curiosity, and civility. Now, one might wonder, how can these two goals coexist, creating a welcoming and inclusive campus culture on the one hand and maintaining a campus culture where practically all viewpoints are welcome, even ones that some of us might, might find unsettling. And the truth is, on many colleges' campuses today, these two things don't coexist, at least not very well. Too often, people are who are politically progressive on matters concerning race and racial justice are willing to engage with people, or I'm sorry, who are unwilling to engage with people who take a more conservative stances on these issues for fear of merely having a conversation validates the other side. Incidents of campus groups protesting, shouting down, or disinviting conservative speakers have been well documented. When this happens, everyone loses. Institutions of higher ed get maligned as being progressive echo chambers, and students don't have a chance to develop the critical thinking skills they need to navigate our complex world. Several of the issues that divide us today involve race or other DEI-related issues, and they are exactly the kinds of issues we need to be talking about, but too often aren't. If we're ever to overcome the mistrust, resentment, and anger these issues evoke in large segments of the public, we need to sit down with those who think differently from us and have frank, respectful discussions. And you know what these issues are. Racial bias in policing, reparations for the descendants of enslaved people, the teaching of critical race theory, the teaching of America's colonial past, affirmative action in college admissions, and so on. Many of the other particularly contentious uh, issues today concern how we view gender, gender identity, sexual preference, and the like. What books should be allowed in school libraries and classrooms? What language do we use to refer to ourselves and others? What bathrooms can people use and which athletic teams can they join? For each of these issues, there tends to be an orthodox view on the right and an orthodox view on the left. A conservative should think X and a liberal should think Y. So what's the point of even having a conversation? When re we resort to this sort of knee-jerk tribalism, we're not really thinking critically or honestly. We don't seriously consider the possibility that the other side might have a point about a given issue. We disregard nuance and we forego the possibility of compromise. As a consequence, the divisions between us only grow. 
Thus, the perceived conflict between DEI and viewpoint diversity on many campuses has real consequences. But I've long held that these two worthy commitments don't have to butt up against each other at all. In fact, I believe that we can't truly move the needle on our DEI initiatives without a robust marketplace of ideas. When it comes to difficult issues like these, we must encourage discourse from across perspectives in order to clarify the issues at hand, to identify the best strategies for addressing them. Where possible, we should seek common ground. But even when we can't, when we can't seek common ground, we should seek the, a good faith engagement that will sharpen our understanding and will enhance the acceptance of whatever strategies and policies emerge. The reality is no one side has a monopoly on truth or virtue. Many of these issues are complex and defy easy answers. Otherwise, we would have moved past them already. No person makes the case better for this sort of treatment of complex and contentious issues than today's commencement speaker, Ronald A. Crutcher. I look forward to telling you more about Dr. Crutcher and to hearing what he has to say shortly. But before we get to that part of today's program, we have some other business to attend to. And that begins with honoring and thanking some of the people who have helped you reach this milestone. First, let us recognize the individuals who've been your teachers and mentors in the classroom, the field, the lab, the clinic, on overseas adventures, and elsewhere on and around our campuses. These people have guided your learning and have enriched your lives, just as you have enriched theirs. Many are present today, and like me, they're proud of you. I ask the members of our faculty and professional staff to please stand so we may recognize them. Thank you. And joining me on the platform are the members of UNE's Board of Trustees and Senior Administration. These individuals perform countless hours of service to UNE, assisting in our decision making and keeping the focus at all times on how we can best prepare our students to succeed. I ask our trustees and senior administrators to please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Now let us acknowledge also the special people who began shaping you long before you arrived at UNE. As you know, that journey, the journey that is culminating today would not have been possible without their love and support. Would the graduating students, parents, please stand. And please stay standing, parents, stay standing. And now the students' grandparents, spouses, partners, children, and other family members, please stand. Thank you. Thank you for your support and guidance of all of our students. At this time, I ask all UNI students and guests who are actively serving in the United States military and all veterans to please stand. For those who may not know, For they, those who may not know, today is Armed Forces Day, a national holiday created by President Truman to honor our military members. And we thank you all for your service to our country. Now, sadly, not all who began this journey with us have been able to complete it. Let us pause for a moment to remember the friends, family members, and other loved ones who we've lost along the way. They will always be part of us. Thank you. 
This time, I'd like to ask President, uh, sorry, Provost Gwen Mahon to recognize those students who are graduating today with honors. Thank you, President Herbert. It is my honor to recognize those undergraduate students who have demonstrated exceptional achievement at the University of New England as reflected in outstanding final grade point averages. Undergraduate students who graduate with a GPA between 3.3 and 3.59 are designated cum laude, or with honor. Those students wear the silver honors cords today. Will cum laude graduates please stand? Thank you. Undergraduate students graduating with a GPA between 3.6 and 3.79 are designated magna cum laude, or with outstanding honor. The, these students wear the blue honor cords today. Will magna cum laude graduates please stand? Thank you. Undergraduate students graduating with a GPA of 3.8 and higher are designated summa cum laude, or with highest honor. These students wear the gold honors cords today. Will our summa cum laude graduates please stand? Thank you. Thank you, Provost Mahon. And now, let us turn our attention to our two honorary degrees we will be conferring today. At the University of New England, our honorary doctoral degrees are awarded to individuals of exemplary personal character who demonstrate excellence in their fields. These degrees are conferred upon individuals whose personal and professional pursuits contribute to the betterment of society. Today's first recipient is Elizabeth A. McClellan. At this time, I invite Ms. McClellan to the front of the stage for the conferral of the, doctor, the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. <laughs> Elizabeth A. McClellan. During a distinguished career as a leader in nursing and healthcare administration, you dedicated your many talents to improving the health and lives of the people you served. In the latter portion of your career, as a nurse administrator, you founded Partners for World Health. This innovative nonprofit organization, located right here in Portland, would soon come to have an outsized impact on improving the health of people in Maine and around the globe. Employing more than a dozen people and some 800 volunteers, including many in our own Nor'easter community, Partners for World Health collects and redistributes supplies, um, uh, various kinds of medical supplies to individuals, communities, and healthcare facilities in need. Through this work, you and your staff limit the medical industry's impact on the environment by diverting materials from landfills. You lower the care costs by reducing or eliminating disposal fees, and you provide health care resources to those much in need. In addition, you organize five medical missions each year, recruiting medical professionals, physicians, and nurses to provide high-quality education, primary care, and surgical services to people around the globe, while also training local medical professionals in those countries. You've received numerous awards for your leadership, compassion, and vision, including the Hanley Center Leadership and Humanitarian Relief Award, the Red Cross Real Hero Award, the Outstanding Nonprofit Award, and the Northeastern University Social Impact Award. In 2019, you were inducted into the University of New England's Distinguished Deborah Morton Society. 
And today, UNE is proud to recognize you with an honorary degree. Elizabeth A. McClellan, we honor your lifetime dedication to your field and to the people whose lives have been touched by your care and vision. Therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all of the honors, privileges, and responsibilities which here and everywhere pertain to this degree. Dr. McClellan, you want to share a few words? Good morning, everyone. I am more than humbled by this very incredibly thoughtful degree. And I want to thank the Board of Trustees here at the University of New England and your president, the best president around. <laughs> And I want to leave you with just a few words that I feel that it's so important that we find our passion and we make a commitment to something greater than our own self-interest. And if you stick with that, if you take that passion, it will grow and you will be able to touch the lives of many people here in our country and in the world. And so I am most honored to accept this degree and I wish you the best of life as you head out with your new careers into your future and make sure that you go out there and you live a life of adventure. Thank you. At this time, I invite Dr. Ronald Crutcher to the front of the stage for the conferral of the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. Yeah. Ronald A. Crutcher, you have distinguished yourself during a 45-year career in higher education, establishing yourself as a national leader in the field while also excelling as a highly accomplished classical musician. After becoming the first cellist to ever earn a doctorate of musical arts at Yale University, you earned a Fulbright scholarship to study cello in Germany and rose through the academic ranks. You inspired students as a music professor, serving as the director of the Butler School of Music at the University of Texas at Austin, and as Dean of the Conservatory at the Cleveland Institute of Music. At the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, you became president of the Black Faculty and Staff Association. Next, you joined Miami University of Ohio, serving as its provost and executive vice president for academic affairs. The next stop along your journey would bring you to Wheaton College. As president of that institution, you emerged as one of the nation's foremost champions of the value of liberal education, the democratic purposes of higher education, diversity, inclusion, and free expression on college campuses. Then you brought your many talents to the University of Richmond. As its president, you led an institution that had barred black people from enrolling when you graduated from high school a generation or two before an institution that exists on the site of a former plantation in what was the capital of the Confederacy. As you work to strengthen the DEI initiatives at Richmond, you emphasize the importance of data when making changes, synthesizing a focus on noble principles with a pragmatic, data-driven approach to action. You also stood up for free speech, decrying cancel culture, encouraging instead the importance of people coming together across ideological divides to discuss contentious issues. You brought to campus controversial speakers like Karl Rove and Ryan T. Anderson, reminding students that, and I quote, understanding grows every time we open ourselves to someone who is different from us, whether in background or beliefs, rather than retreating into censorship motivated by fear. You also argued for a more nuanced approach 
to the movement to topple monuments and rename buildings across the American South. In so doing, you discouraged overly simplistic solutions to long-simmering conflicts. You bravely waded into treacherous waters, buoyed by your keen intellect and your unwavering faith in the power of discourse. Dr. Crutcher, you've served not merely the institutions you have led, but also the greater good of higher education. In 2021, you were part of a distinguished bipartisan group that published a major policy document titled Campus Free Expression, A New Roadmap that addressed the erosion of a campus culture of free expression and offered ways to resurrect open inquiry, frank discussion, and viewpoint diversity on campuses across the country. Additionally, you've served as the chairman of the board of the American Council on Education, as a senator of the Phi Beta Kappa Society, as a board member of IES Abroad, and as a member of the Board of Governors of Bard College in Berlin. Amazingly, in addition to all of that, you've led a parallel life as a highly successful and much celebrated classical musician. You made your Carnegie Hall debut in 1985 and went on to join the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra and several other symphonies. For almost 40 years, you performed in the US and abroad as a member of the Klemperer Trio. In that realm, you served on the boards of the Austin Symphony, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, the Cleveland Orchestra, the Richmond Symphony, and the Berklee College of Music. Having distinguished yourself in the world of higher education and classical music, Dr. Crutcher, you exemplify the erudition that an education grounded in the liberal arts inculcates in graduates. Ronald A. Crutcher, it is my pleasure to honor you today on behalf of all the people whose lives you have touched by your leadership and your music. Therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities which here and everywhere pertain to that degree. Nor'easters, I present to you the 2023 UNE Honorary Degree recipient and today's commencement speaker, Dr. Ronald A. Kretschner. I just wanted to say one more thing before, I'm gonna go off script here for a second, Ron. So I, I want to also acknowledge um, Ron's amazing spouse, his wife, Betty. Where is Betty? Where is she sitting? There she is right there. So I have to say um, the, the job of the presidential spouse is not always easy. And Betty has been a friend and mentor to our own UNE first spouse, Lynn Bransma, and I want to thank you, Betty, for all the help and friendship and guidance and mentorship that you provided to Lynn. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to add that. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much for that kind introduction, President Herbert. And I'm going to go off strip a little bit here, too, since you, 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 you introduced uh, my life's partner, Dr. Betty Neal Crutcher. I happen to be ready, wearing Dr. Betty Neal Crutcher's robe today <laughs> from her PhD. There was a mistake made and my assistant sent her robe and not mine. <laughs> She's gonna be upset with me for mentioning that, but I couldn't help it. And actually I had a dream last night that I was late to the commencement today and that when I got here, um, they couldn't find my robe, so who knew, you know? <laughs> At any rate, President Herbert, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, and most especially members of the class of 2023, I am deeply honored to stand before you this morning. 
I've known President Herbert since we met at a meeting of the Council on Independent Colleges several years ago, and we engaged in some really interesting and uh, discussions, conversations, especially about the intersection of free expression and inclusion. Uh, I have the utmost respect for him and consider him a trusted colleague, and I want to thank him again uh, for inviting me to be here. Now to you, the class of 2023. You deserve a heartfelt congratulations. You are truly remarkable and impressive. During the past few years, you have experienced the worst pandemic in 100 years, a racial reckoning the likes of which we have not experienced in 50 years, and you are living through an increasingly troubling economic situation due to a maelstrom of global and national factors, a war in Ukraine, the pandemic, and international political upheaval. And add to that the tumultuous presidential election followed by an insurrection that threatened to overturn the will of the American people. While I am fully aware that today we want to celebrate and focus on your accomplishments, I cannot stand before you without mentioning the personal impact on some of you of these events. I know they are relatable to you and the state we are in as a society, which, in my opinion, can be perceived as a collective knee on all of our necks. A knee that is preventing us from unifying to solve the bigger problems facing us as we strive to build a sustainable society. If we don't solve these problems, we will not be able to breathe as a nation or, quite frankly, as a world. I want you to take just a moment to reflect on all that you have accomplished and overcome and to recognize that the past few years have provided an unprecedented springboard from which to launch into this evolving world of ours. You will enter a world that has become more polarized than ever before. In his remarks, President Herbert implored you to, quote, seek out and engage in experiences with a wide range of people, even people with whom you might think that you have nothing in common. Allow me to share with you a personal story that I hope will illuminate this subject and help you as you enter into this challenging world. 25 years ago, long before I became the college president, I was hurrying to meet with the CEO of an oil company to discuss the possibility of his funding a scholarship for violin students. He was the chairman of a foundation that provided financial support for violin study. We'd never met, but I was head of the School of Music at the University of Texas at Austin, and this moment had been months in the making. We said hello, shook hands, and sat down to talk. Then he blurted it out. I had no idea you were black. I was angry. You see, this was not at all how I'd imagine our conversation beginning. What kind of racist is this man, I thought. Should I just cut the conversation short and walk away? But I had a job to do, you see. Besides, my father had always taught me that when someone says something to you that knocks you off balance, don't respond immediately. Take a deep breath. So instead, I decided to listen. The man continued to talk. He told me that he and his wife had attended the Aspen Music Festival for several years and they rarely saw any string players of color in the orchestra. He wondered aloud about the dearth of black and brown string players and lamented about this and wondered how the classical music community could do better in nurturing artists from varied backgrounds. As I listened very closely, I realized there was more to the CEO than I originally thought. Here was my opening. After all, I was there on a mission. So I talked about what the University of Texas was trying to do in that regard. I told the CEO about one student in particular, a young black woman in whom I saw enormous potential for a career in classical music. You see, the CEO and I both love the same art form. I realized, and there, that we, we could connect. Our shared enthusiasm for classical music far surmounted my initial discomfort. And you know what? A few weeks later, the music school had its scholarship. 
and my student went on to earn a coveted position in the viola section of the Cleveland Orchestra. Graduates, I share this story with you because you are about to enter a deeply polarized world where any discussion around race, religion, or politics teeters on the edge of diatribe. People who are willing to step outside the comfort of their own ideological bubble, who can openly and energetically disagree without acrimony or without threat of retaliation, are now something of an endangered species. And that is disrupting the entire ecosystem of our democracy, whose very health and ability to breathe freely depends on the energetic exchange of diverse and competing ideas. You see, graduates, our American democracy is not a fully-fledged adult. At best, it is an emerging adult. The good news is that all of you hold the power to drive positive change and help our country live up to its promise of e pluribus unum, out of many, one. If you embrace the notion that our democracy and the republic have not yet achieved adulthood, then I, access, I, I suggest that you consider how you will nurture it along the way to a more sustainable future. I would suggest that positive social change is a matter of collective consultation through dialogue. Yes, there are key moments when peaceful resistance may be necessary. I truly believe that your University of New England education has prepared you well for this task. As a result of your hard work, you are prepared not only with the knowledge and skills to succeed in today's global economy, but the combined strength of unity through adversity. You leave here today with the civic capacity, social responsibility, empathy, and the understanding needed to address the questions that our nation will need you to answer in order for our democracy to be sustained. Class of 2023, as you commence your new lives, my invitation to you is as simple as it is challenging. Solve, resolve to resist the indignities of polarization. Draw on your UNE education and strive to be active and empathetic listeners who seek first to understand and then to be understood. Listeners committed to engaging meaningfully with diverse viewpoints, even when opposing or humiliating viewpoints knock you off balance. And you will be knocked off balance at times, just as I was. In such moments, when you find yourselves neither navigating a divide, I challenge you not to tear others down or to break the bridges that bind us together. Be bigger than that. Be an intellectual builder. Honor your families and those teachers here in the past who inspired you. Center your ideas, ask probing questions, listen deeply, consider building a consensus through consultation, and remember that your own experience may or may not necessarily be exactly like that of others. The purpose here is not to try to win arguments, not always to be right or to lay blame or shame. Such an approach will only perpetuate the circle of recriminations that has become all too common in our polarized society. Rather, the purpose is to strive to understand, truly understand, why individuals with different viewpoints think and believe as they do. Where is the point of agreement? In the process, your own beliefs will be tested and refined, both better preparing you for engaged citizenship in our pluralistic society, and perhaps leading to new and surprising connections, just as happened with the oil CEO and me. And the beneficiary of that consultative success, the student who went on to play in one of the world's greatest orchestras because of it. 50 years from now, our new national story must be about how we made one out of many. That is my call of action to you. I am confident that all of you are more than up to the challenge. Graduates of the class of 2023, the faculty, staff, including everyone who has supported your education here, such as the food service workers, residence hall cleaning staff, the building and ground staff, and the leadership at the University of New England, share my great pride in your accomplishments. 
they join me in enthusiastically welcoming your frequent return to campus. While you may not think about UNE on a daily basis, we encourage you to remain engaged in the life of this remarkable university. And we all look forward with great hope and anticipation to everything you will accomplish as you lead lives of purpose wherever you may find your purpose in the world. Congratulations and Godspeed to each of you. Wow, thank you so much for those inspiring words, Dr. Crutcher. At this time, I'd like to ask Provost Mahon to begin the presentation of degrees to our deserving candidates. As we begin the introduction of degree candidates and conferral of degrees, we ask that everyone in the audience please hold their applause until we have recognized and awarded all degrees from the respective colleges. Thank you. I'd like to begin with the College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Christine Brown, Associate Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, will present the candidates from her college. Thank you, Provost Mahan. Will the candidates in the College of Arts and Sciences for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science please rise and remain standing. President Herbert. As Associate Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, I am privileged to present to you the University of New England College of Arts and Sciences undergraduate degree candidates for the year 2023. These scholars assembled here have qualified in all respects for degrees by completing the curricula offered by the University of New England. The faculty and the Board of Trustees have recommended that they be awarded their bachelor de bachelor's degrees in recognition of their accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the appropriate bachelor's degrees with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome graduates to the Fellowship of Credentialed Scholars. You may be seated. Will the candidates in the College of Arts and Sciences for the degrees of Master in Biological Sciences, Master of Science in Marine Sciences, and Professional Science Masters in Ocean Food Systems please rise and remain standing? President Herbert. <laughs> As associate... <laughs> As Associate Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, I am privileged to present to you the University of New England College of Arts and Sciences master's degree candidate for the year 2023. These scholars assembled here have qualified in all respects for degrees by completing the curricula offered by the University of New England. The faculty and the Board of Trustees have recommended that they be awarded their master's degree in recognition of their accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you and your colleagues who you're representing <laughs> the appropriate master's degrees with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome to the Fellowship of Credentialed Scholars. You can be seated. And now, the Westbrook College of Health Professions. Dr. Jennifer Morton, Dean of the Westbrook College of Health Professions, will present the candidates 
from her college. Good morning. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science please rise and remain standing? President Herbert. As Dean of the Westbrook College of Health Professions, I'm privileged to present to you the University of New England Westbrook College of Health Professions bachelor, bachelor degree candidates for 2023. These scholars assembled here have qualified in all respects for degrees by completing the curricula offered by the University of New England. The faculty and board of trustees have recommended that they be awarded their degrees and recognition of their accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the board of trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the appropriate bachelor's degree with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome, graduates, to the community of credential scholars. You may be seated. Will the candidates for degrees of Master of Science in Athletic Training, Master of Science in Nursing Anesthesia, Master of Science in Occupational Therapy, Master of Science in Physician Assistant, and Master of Social Work, please rise and remain standing. <laughs> President Herbert, as Dean of the Westbrook College of Health Professions, I am privileged to present you to you, the University of New England College of Health Professions Master's Degrees candidates for the year 2023. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the, uh, by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the appropriate master's degrees with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome, graduates, to the community of credential scholars. You may now be seated. Will the candidates for degree of Doctor of Pharmacy and Doctor of Physical Therapy please rise and remain standing? President Herbert. As Dean of the Westbrook College of Health Professions, I am privileged to present to you the University of New England College of Health Professions Doctor of Pharmacy and Doctor of Physical Therapy degree candidates for 2023. These scholars assembled here have qualified in all respects for degrees by completing the curricula offered by the University of New England. The faculty and board of trustees have recommended that they be awarded their degrees in recognition of their accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the board of trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the appropriate doctoral degree with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome, graduates, to the community of credentialed scholars. You may now be seated. The College of Professional Studies Dr. Beth Taylor Nolan, Dean of the College of Professional Studies, will present the candidates from her college. Will the candidates for the degrees of Masters of Science in Applied Nutrition, Master of Science in Education, Master of Science in Health Informatics, Master of Healthcare Administration, Master of Public Health, and Master of Social Work, please rise and remain standing. <laughs> President Herbert, as the Dean of the College of Professional Studies, I am privileged to present to you 
the University of New England College of Professional Studies master's degree candidates for the year 2023. These scholars assembled here have qualified in all respects for degrees by completing the curricula offered by the University of New England. The faculty and board of trustees have recommended that they be awarded their degrees in recognition of their accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the appropriate master's degrees with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome, graduates, to the community of credentialed scholars. You may now be seated. Will the candidates for the Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study please rise and remain standing? <laughs> President Herbert, as Dean of the College of Professional Studies, I am privileged to present to you the University of New England College of Professional Studies Certificate of Advanced Graduate Studies candidate for the year 2023. These scholars assembled here have qualified in all respects for degrees by completing the curricula offered by the University of New England. The faculty and board of trustees have recommended that they be awarded their degrees in recognition of their accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the board of trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome, graduates, to the community of credentialed scholars. And finally, will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Education please rise and remain standing. President Herbert, as Dean of the College of Professional Studies, I am privileged to present to you the University of New England College of Professional Studies Doctor of Education degree candidates for the year 2023. These scholars assembled here have qualified in all respects for degrees by completing the curricula offered by the University of New England. The faculty and board of trustees have recommended that they be awarded their degrees in recognition of their accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the Doctor of Education degree with all of the rights, responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome graduates to the community of credentialed scholars. You may now be seated. The College of Dental Medicine. Dr. Nicole Kimmies, Dean of the College of Dental Medicine, will present the candidates from her college. Good morning, everyone. Will the truly outstanding candidates for the Doctor of Dental Medicine degree please stand, please rise and remain standing. Thank you. President Herbert, as the most proud dean of the College of Dental Medicine, I am so privileged to present to you the University of New England College of Dental Medicine Extraordinary Doctoral Degree candidates for the year 2023. These competent and ambitious scholars assembled here have qualified in all respects for degrees by completing the extremely arduous curricula offered by the University of New England. The de dedicated faculty and board of trustees have wholeheartedly recommended that they be awarded their Doctor of Dental Medicine degrees in recognition of their accomplishments.
by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the Doctor of Dental Medicine degree with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome, graduates, to the community of credentialed scholars. You may now be seated. The College of Osteopathic Medicine. Dr. Jane Carrero, Dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, will present the candidates from her college. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine please rise and remain standing. Dearest President Herbert, as Dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, I am extremely privileged, more than Dr. Kimmies, to present to you the University of New England College of Osteopathic Medicine doctoral degree candidates for the year of 2023. The rest of them are at home studying for one more test. <laughs> These extraordinary scholars assembled here have, with Taylor Swift-like energy, qualified in all respects for this extraordinary degree by completing the crucifying curricula <laughs> offered by our kind of sometimes nasty, but hardworking and really motivated faculty who want them to do the best at the University of New England. Our incredible faculty and the Board of Trustees have energetically recommended that they be awarded their Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degrees in recognition of their outstanding accomplishments. I was waiting to see who would be the first to somehow interject Taylor Swift into the conversation. So, um, so that's Dean Carrero. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of New England and by vote of the faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Welcome, graduates, to the community of credentialed scholars. You may now be seated. And everyone, congratulations to all of the University of New England 2023 graduates. And I'd now like to present the class of 2023 the president of the University of New England St. Francis College Alumni Council, my friend Regina Fisher Raboyne. The best was safe for last. Good morning and congratulations. What an honor and privilege it is to be here and to speak with you today. As president of the University of New England St. Francis College Alumni Council, also a St. Francis College alum class of 1977, wife to a St. Francis College class of 1975 alum, parent of two University of New England grads whose tassels I am wearing Thus, the hat is falling a little low. And on behalf of all of the 30,000 St. Francis, Westbrook, and Unite University of New England alumni, I am delighted and proud to welcome all of you to the UNE alumni community. <laughs> Grad
graduation may feel like you are leaving behind a close-knit community of friends and classmates you have developed over the last several years. But in truth, you are beginning a new phase in your relationship with the University of New England. The moment you stepped on campus, you became part of something bigger. Bigger than you, your class, or even your program or college. You are part of a broad and thriving UNE community that includes alumni in every state and across the globe. A remarkable trait of the UNE community is that this is a group of people who are not afraid of change. We are eager to do things differently to solve the problems in our communities and the world. We are also people who recognize change in ourselves and to our perspectives, challenging ourselves to continue growing and learning. We are a community that continues to embrace the message that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s historic visit in 1964 brought to then St. Francis College. The importance of civil rights, of nonviolent civil disobedience, of inclusivity, and of securing social and environmental justice. When hurdles and unforeseen challenges lie before you, know that you can rely on your Nor'easter community and its values to support you. UNE attracts and graduates forward-thinking problem solvers, and you can count on this institution to be continually evolving. When I graduated 46 years ago, it was on the Biddeford campus overlooking the Saco River estuary and the kiosk at the point. Then, UNE was a different place than the one you are leaving today. However, instead of feeling fearful of change and ruminating over the good old days, I am filled with pride when I see and experience these positive innovations, I see the opportunities UNE provides for students now and the impact you will make in the world because of these and future opportunities. As your families and friends celebrate this important milestone with you today, please remember your connection to the UNE community does not end here. It will only grow stronger in the years to come. And to make your entrance into the UNE com alumni community official, I will now ask that you please stand and join me in the turning of your tassels. Congratulations! Please be seated. Thank you, Regina, and congratulations, graduates. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, there are many people, in addition to your friends and family members, who've been cheering you on in your studies from the day you first walked through UNI's doors. Those folks are your professors and members of UNI's professional staff, so many of whom you've worked closely with over the past four years. They didn't want to, to leave, for you to leave, without a chance to congratulate you and wish you the very best. So please, at this time, please turn your attention to this video montage of well wishes from our faculty and professional staff. Well, grab a seat. Okay. I'm like, yep. You ready? Yep. We got this. All right. All right. I could not be more thrilled to be here and be one of the first people to congratulate this year's School of Marine and Environmental Programs graduates. So let me just say it, you made it. We are so proud of you guys. You guys have been resilient. I hope you thoroughly enjoy your careers as physical therapists. I am really excited that you are now our colleagues. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Woo! Seeing you come in on day one and grow to be such incredible, impressive seniors is so rewarding. Hi, class of 2023. Remember us, Danielle and Teresa. Congratulations on your very hard-earned degree. You, you made, made it. it.
I would like to say congratulations and thank you very much to all of our students. We are all tremendously proud of the accomplishments that you have received this past year and we look forward to calling you our peers as registered dental hygienists in the future. You showed amazing resilience in, in battling a pandemic throughout your whole time here at UNE, and here you are. It's been a pleasure having you here, and congratulations. We wish you all the best. Big congratulations from the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. I want to thank those that gave so much of your time, energy, and enthusiasm towards serving others during your time here at UNE. We're all really proud of you and really excited for your next phase in your journey as educators. Congratulations to all of our online students of the College of Professional Studies. We are so proud of you. Congratulations to the BSW class of 2023. We know that you're going to be incredible leaders and change agents in the healthcare field. And a special shout out to our OT students out there who are celebrating this really big day. Each one of you is exceptional. I hope you all continue to play and compete after graduation. Your friends at the Finley Recreation Center and the Office of Graduate Professional Student Affairs would like to say congratulations. congratulations. You've made a lasting impact during your time here at UNE. And uh, we can't wait to see all the great things you do uh, in the world after you leave here. The faculty of the Nursing Anesthesia Program would like to congratulate the class of 2023. We're so proud of you. Get out there and make a difference. I am so privileged to have worked with you. Call your mother and your parents every other day. I am so incredibly proud of you and all that you have achieved. Congratulations, we're so proud of you. Can't wait to see what comes next for you. The clinical education team from the Department of Physical Therapy would like to wish you congratulations. And acknowledge all of your hard work. We are wishing you the best of luck. Congratulations. congratulations. You're passionate, you have your whole lives ahead of you to do amazing things out there, and we're really excited to see what you do on this next adventure. You did it, congratulations. <laughs> always remember on the hard days of medicine, you can always teach a child to do the duck walk the quack quack waddle waddle. I just wanted to congratulate the class of 2023 and say, you did it. Class of 2023, the GPLs wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. Congratulations. Congratulations. And remember, you may not know it now, but you're gonna miss this. Congratulations, 2023. So a big thank you to all of our faculty and professional staff who contributed to that lovely piece. And now I declare this 188th commencement ceremony of the University of New England to be officially adjourned. As the academic procession begins, I ask the audience and graduates to please remain standing until all members of the platform party have left the area. Congratulations again, and thank you all for joining us for this incredibly memorable day.
Thank <laughs> you.